And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition of Voices from the Grid. It's me. It's me. It's White Ranger Michael Lindenbaum. I was trying to go with a DDP thing, but then I realized halfway through it, I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> and joining me is uh, the Blue Ranger, Billy, or Brian. Cassie. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Billy Brian. Uh <laughs> How you doing, Brian? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. We're doing no range. We're pretty good. Dang, don't do that. Billy Brian. How <laughs> you sweated the full boom hour right there. Man, I tell you what, we're going to talk about some dang old brain back in time, going back in time, to, 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 going back and being kids and dang old boom, man. <laughs> Everyone's already going like, yeah, this yeah, episode we're is going to be <laughs> we're, we're, we're clicking off this episode right now. <laughs> Uh, we're doing Rangers Back in Time Part 1 and 2. I think we should just get right into it before some more people click off the episode. Yeah. Um, hey, I made you laugh. That's all I care about, man. Um, so it's time for everyone's favorite segment of the show every time, even though nobody literally likes it, but I like it in my mind. The quick run through of Rangers Back in Time Parts 1 and 2. Uh, at Angel Grove High School, we see the class sharing photos of them as kids. This gives Zed the idea to send the Rangers back in time. And honestly, I think Bulk and Skulls is the best of all the pictures. It really is. It's perfect. Uh, Zed sets some magic to make Earth reverse its rotation. Billy notices the clock going backwards and points this out. Zed then speeds up the process, and Alpha and Zordon are looking into what Zed is doing. And now the Rangers are kids, along with the rest of the class. Man, the Rangers are even bullies as kids. Like, they really are. At the park, Goldar sends putties to attack the kids. The, ki the kids, including Bulk and Skull, fight off the putties. Props to them on that. I mean, that was kind of cool. The fact that kid Bulk and Skull fight off the putties, too, is pretty nice. Uh, Zed creates a monster out of a camera. The monster takes a picture of the Rangers and they get caught in the photo, which then ends episode one and brings us to part two, which at the command center, Alpha is working on the descrambler. Back at the park, Bulk and Skull run away with the picture of the Rangers. Goldar catches up the Bulk and Skull and Alpha comes to the rescue as he freezes Goldar and the monster. Bulk and Skull ran away back to the school. And then Alpha retrieves the photo and revives the Rangers. Nice mustaches, Billy and Kim. Those are some fine mustaches. Uh, Alpha gives the kids the history. Zordon informs Alpha that Goldar and the monster are on the loose. The Rangers are teens again, and they morph into action. Monster grows, and Rocky and team calls for their zords. Monster makes a photocopy of Rocky's zord, and then Tommy takes on Goldar and the putties. Uh, Rangers then go to the Rock of Time, only to face off of Goldar, Putties, and past monsters, and the Rangers get their weapons to dispatch the monsters. Uh, with the power cannon, the Rangers destroy the Rock of Time. And that is Rangers Back in Time, Parts 1 and 2. Right on. Um, so... Rangers Back in Time Part 1, original air date, February 4th, 1995. Um, so this episode um, was the first Power Rangers episode to be aired in 1995. The last episode to air was A Real Fish Story on November 29th, 1994, which means that there were about, I want to say, two months off the air. Look, the Rangers need to take time off for the holiday season too, okay? Um these two episodes, Mike, mark episode 99 and 100 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And to celebrate, I'm going to open myself an ice cold beer. Oh, never mind. I don't have any in stock. Congratulations, Power Rangers. And this is a your... kid's show. We don't have beer. Okay. <laughs> Root beer. Um, congratulations, Power Rangers, on episodes 99 and 100. You're, you're never going to go past that, are you? It's just going to stop right here. Um <laughs> And with a name like Rangers Back in Time, this has got to be an awesome. This has got to be an awesome episode about the Rangers traveling through time, like the SNES game TMNT Turtles in Time, right? 
Let me see. Uh, uh, never mind. In the words of review, bra, my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Let's get into the episode proper. The episode starts in the classroom. Miss Appleby says that the assignment was to bring in a photo from childhood and a report on your most memorable moment from that age. Easy enough. I could do it. You could do it. Anybody could really do it. Um, no such things exist for me. Oh. Get wrecked, nerd. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Uh, everybody but Bulk and Skull volunteer to go first. Um, this is like the Mad Libs version of a report, by the way. Um, Zed views the report happening and suggests turning them into kids with the rock of time. They're going to turn the earth backwards enough times that they can uh, de-age the children and can't fight anymore. So apparently what you're telling me is Zed watched Superman 1 uh, and he got the idea to return, the, you know, spin around the earth. Do you think that this is going to turn Alpha into a box full of parts and circuits, by the way? Like if he was outside the command center in that sphere of influence, do you think he would have just been like, like, as we have learned with other episodes, the command center is never affected. It's never affected. But if he were outside the command center, all of a sudden it's like, oh no, Alpha is just a circuit board now. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. But as long as they're in the command center, they're not affected. I mean, remember we had wild West Rangers. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, yeah. So, okay. So Zed stops the Earth's rotation. He spun it backwards, and no one noticed anything until the clock started turning backwards. I'm going to get a little sciencey here. If the Earth stopped spinning for even a second, we would all be dead. We would all go flying into the nearest wall, or if you were in a skyscraper, into the window, possibly crashing out and falling to your death. The Earth is moving at a rate of about 1,000 miles per hour around the sun. Just some food for thought. If the Earth were to stop and turn around, do you realize that the, if the Earth stopped in general, we'd all be yeeted off the planet? Yes, and into space. We there there would be no child versions of us to walk around the Earth going, "What happened?" Because we'd all be floating around going. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Appleby comments on how odd the situation and asks, what should we do? Zed comments on this saying there's nothing they can do and speeds up the process at which the earth spins backwards, which says an awful lot about what Zed does in a day because he's watching their teacher. Um, Alpha has the computers watch over the rangers as he tries to reverse the rotation back to normal. Good luck, Alpha. The rangers are now kids and they're all powerless. Um, they act like nothing's wrong and that this is normal. And also, was Miss Appleby an elementary teacher when she was younger? Because I get that vibe from her. Uh, she actually kind of looks like one of my old elementary teachers um, when she has the longer hair. Vulcan Skull put a slime balloon on Kimberly's chair, which I guess she wasn't supposed to notice in her chair when she sat down. The balloon falls to the ground, explodes in Vulcan Skull's faces, and it looks more like shaving cream to me. So uh, Vulcan Skull have to spend the rest of the day in Principal Kaplan's room but class is dismissed and the rangers decide to go to the park alpha and zoran comment that the kids don't remember being rangers because they're too young to remember i don't know how that works them darn uh whippersnappers <laughs> with the, with their with their juvenile dementia um alpha is tasked with i don't even think that's a thing uh alpha is tasked with constructing a remote molecular to scrambler to get them back to normal. Also, transporting the rangers back to the command center would be too much too frightening to, for them for Zordon. Um, Mike, what are your thoughts on this or, or how it might work? Yeah, do it anyway. Scare the little bastards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, see what happens. Um, Screw it. Like We've gotten this far. Let's go for it. Yeah. The rangers' personalities do seem intact, as do Vulcan Skulls. There's two random adults walking by that try to take a photo of the kids because they're cute and kids, stranger danger is a very real thing. Just know that. The weird couple drop the camera and leave it. And I immediately said, okay, that's gonna be the villain. Uh, Zed sends down the putties, the way things are tracking here. Will the Rangers even be, know how to fight them? And yeah, nope, they don't know a thing about the putties. 
Just kick uh, them in the shin, you know. Just you know, yes. if they're low enough, just kick them in the shin all the time. Yeah, you know, t- t- take out their take out their knee and then stab them in the carotid. Uh, this should be an easy fight. Adam asks a putty if they want to play dodgeball, and the putty contemplates this. He and then smacks the ball away. It's rude because the putty literally just sits there and is like, "Do I want to play dodgeball with him? Get out of here! I play <laughs> dodgeball with him. Come on." <laughs> Happy birthday to the ground. It's like, no, that's mean. <laughs> that putty's mean just for the sake of being mean. That's not even cool. Um, I'd play dodgeball with you. <laughs> I'd play dodgeball with you. I'd show no mercy, but I'd play dodgeball with you. I, yeah. <clears throat> um, slowly but surely, after trying to run away, the kids start fighting back. Uh, and I got to give it to the kid playing Tommy. Not only does he look like a kid version of JDF, he's also got the katas and the stances down pat. Uh, the kids learn to aim for the Z, which is hilarious because then the putties, once they see that, are like, no, 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 don't do that. No, no, no. They're like, they're literally just like freaking out like, oh, crap. They figured it out again, didn't they? <laughs> this is going to suck. Uh, and the tired are... of me, I'm tired of my dismemberment. <laughs> <laughs> my health um, insurance does not cover dismemberment. Yeah. <laughs> which also tells you a lot about Lord Zed when, when the health insurance doesn't cover the dismemberments that the, the putties go through every episode. <laughs> Do we get a good HMO package? No, I'm just going to build more. Oh, this, okay. Crap. <laughs> I didn't ask to be made into a putty. Um, Zed, of course, uses the camera to make a monster, which will take a photo of them and trap them forever in a literal freeze frame. Freeze frame? I don't know. <laughs> Holy crap, the monster actually captured them in the photo. Pretty good cliffhanger. I'm kind of surprised. And then we're moving on to episode two of Rangers Back in Time which originally aired February 11th, 1995. So, Mike, seven-year-old Brian had to wait a week for the resolution to this episode, but I, adult Brian with the future powers of DVD in my hands, get to immediately watch part two. Welcome to the 100th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You you do realize, I mean, you're older than you, and um, an eight-year-old Mike had to wait the eight weeks too, you know? Yeah. Well, it was actually a- no, no, no. You were had to be six years old. I was seven. Ninety five. I was seven because. Oh yeah, yeah, I- yeah. Because ninety four. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I'm thinking something else. Yeah, Wait, I, no. I was eight. Yeah, I was eight. I was eight. Oh God, and, I can't. I can't math. And anymore. you were and you were six years old at the time because your was, birthday was later in the year. Yeah. Well, I was six and ninety three, and then ninety four. I turned seven, and then ninety five. But this is February, so I was still seven. Yeah, and I and I was eight. Yeah. How how are you older than me? It just doesn't make sense. Because I was born in eighty six. You were born in eighty seven. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't also, feel like it. It doesn't feel like it. Like 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 I I'm realistically I'm actually not a year older than you. I'm actually I think like a few months. Yeah, I'm like uh, what is it? I'm October first. You're July something so july 27th so like i'm like 10 months older than you okay that makes sense um again just happy that we have the dvds now though because yeah because netflix doesn't screw anybody over no not at all yeah now you this is gonna be future proved okay um so we open up the episode Elf is still working on the device. Uh, they then have to recover the photograph to scramble the rangers and destroy the rock of time. And the photo's in Bulk and Skull's hands. Damn it. Bulk and Skull bump into Goldar. They yell, Mommy! And he says, that's a word I've never been called before. Um, we'll play, Goldar. We'll play. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, I think it's kind of cool that they meet him here since they're going to get so buddy-buddy in Zeo. Um, when Zed asks why Goldar isn't back, he scans them and says, you're seven feet tall, lame brain, just take it from them. <laughs> and it was at this point, I was like, oh no, am I starting to identify with Lord Zed? No. I can, I, I can, I can identify his struggles on a personal level and that's not good. Um, Alpha gets the photo back, the kids grow back, and Billy and Kim have the mustaches that Bulk and Skull drew on their faces uh the rangers go to 
grow to full size and go to fight Goldar in Photomare. Uh, Photomare goes huge at minute 8 of 20, and we get Zords this early in the ep- episode. Awesome. I'm, I'm here for it, because that means that we have potentially 12, ep- 12 minutes of Zord footage. Uh, Photomare makes a copy of the Red Thunder Zord, and Tommy takes on the putties and Goldar on the ground. This, Mike, is an awesome series of fights, in my opinion. Um, there is a note from Ranger Wiki about this fight, however, uh, and this is where I not only a Power Rangers fan, but a Super Sentai fan, have to bring up some stuff going on behind the scenes. So, uh, the original Die Ranger episode involved Photomare, called Copy Empress in Japan, so it was a girl in Japan, um, who was sent to kill the Die Rangers using her powers to copy them into duplicates, referred to as the Copy Die Ranger. The only way to destroy them was to destroy the copy machine on her chest, which made the copies vanish, at which point she pulled out the growth bomb all Gorom monsters carried with them and cue Zord battle. This episode actually corrects an episode from Die Ranger using recycled footage. In Die Ranger, copy mythical Chi warrior Ryuseo was created from Dyrano, the Thunder Megazord, instead of the original Ryuseo, which makes no sense. Here, recycled shots of the Red Dragon Thunder Zord replaced the Thunder Megazord shots, so the error is actually replaced. This is also why the two Zords never appear together or fight one another. So, fun little note there. Um, Tommy fights Goldar for the first time. It feels like since he lost the Green Ranger powers and the Thunder Megazord dispatches the Red Thunder Megazord copy and Photomare easily. The Rock of Time threatens to destabilize the Earth, however. Uh, awesome fight with Goldar and monsters uh, past. We need a hero by Ron Wasserman plays. Uh, they call upon the power cannon to destroy the rock of time. And my only note for the end of this episode, uh, really, when it comes to the rock of time, is they missed a golden opportunity to call it the rock of ages. But that's just me. Yeah, rock of time made more sense because of the whole time continuum thing. Sure. Uh, but yeah, the, this episode uh, I thought was... I don't know. It was a it was a pretty good uh, commemorative episode. Um, I really liked the Zord fights in it, um, and I believe I, am I am I wrong in thinking that these kids later showed up in season three, and also Alien Rangers. I wouldn't be surprised if, if they were, if not the same ones, at least because I know they turn into kids again. Yeah, and it's just a matter of uh, you know is it the same ones or was they were they different ones. I want to say, at the very least, the kid that plays Tommy as a kid, like, I want to say that's the same That's the same actor. And maybe the one for Rocky, too. Yeah. I don't know. But, <clears throat> but overall, pretty serviceable episode. I don't really have any complaints about it. What about you, Mike? Nah, I mean, it did its job. Yeah. It did its job. Um, I'm not certain that I would necessarily have gone with a... Um, now that I'm just kind of thinking out loud, I'm not certain I would have necessarily gone with a episode about the Rangers like losing their powers and you know being turned back into kids as the episode to commemorate 100 episodes of the series. I probably would have gone with something different. Having said that, I'm not entirely certain what that would have been. I maybe I would have tried to do something. If it were me, I would try and do something where, because it's a commemorative episode, okay, what about the Thunder Megazord and the White Tiger Zord fighting the Dino Megazord and the Dragon Zord? Granted, yes, you would have to do either a lot of editing or do a, do, do like American Zord footage, but I feel like something like that would have been a better, um, you know, 100 episode celebration kind of thing. What about you? I mean, they, they, they could have, but at the same time, you got to look at it from another perspective of, uh, you know, they had their storyline that they wanted to roll with, so that's what they rolled with. Yeah. And I mean, I, I guess at the time, they probably weren't thinking too much about it. It was just like, oh, hey, 100 episodes. Yeah. Right on. So, like, like let, let's put it in perspective. Like, back then, they really never made a huge deal mm-hmm. out of um out of like those milestone episodes like they do today right 
So I guess at the very least we get Forever Red later on. So the kid who played young Rocky is the one that also returned in Zio. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because uh, he came back for the, which is essentially Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. Mm-hmm. So he came back for that. Which Let's... I know people dub as season 3.5. Um, the actress who played young Aisha came back. So I'm going to say that it's pretty safe that all of them came back. There, there, there might've been one or two kids that were like, oh no, I have a thing going on that they weren't able to come back. But it does look like that cast was that cat, that, that the cast in this episode looks very similar, if not identical to who we later see in, um, the Zeo crystal arc. Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm looking at it right now, and it looks like they all, they all come back. Well, that's good for for that's the good. season three arc, for the Zeo crystals and stuff. Right on. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So we will definitely be seeing them later on, uh, when we get to season three. Um, I think that that's really it for my notes on this episode. If you have anything else, cool. or yours. All right, cool. Social media. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at One Drunk Geek. You can also uh, find the show One Drunk Geek at castwavestudios.com. Uh, be sure to check out Boldly Going Nowhere, One Drunk Geek, and all of our fantastic shows over there. Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram at Dragon22. Michael, where can we find you on the www? The www's? Yep, the www's. Uh, Twitter at AtTheLindaMom75, Facebook at Facebook.com slash X75 Productions, Twitch doing the game and thing uh, at Twitch.tv slash the Michael X75. And then, of course, everything's on the website at TXHDHockey.com slash VFTG. And the Twitter for the show is at VFTG underscore PR. And uh, just for the hell of it, uh, you can find me on Instagram deleting everyone's comments on my Twitch stuff because all they do is just go, oh, you should promote your Twitch on this by messaging this account, which doesn't exist, uh, <laughs> at, at the Michael X 75 Awesome. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, thank you for tuning in to yet another more phenomenal episode. Uh, as always, be sure to grab your power morphers and your power coins. May the power protect you.